Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Roman Dura um, from Saudi Arabia. Um, I'm a specialized consultant uh, in physical medicine rehabilitation, specialized in brain injury and neurorehabilitation, and currently I'm covering the uh, stroke rehabilitation unit in King Fahad Medical City. So today um, uh, we're going to talk about the principle of stroke rehabilitation care, the recommended standardized practice. And I would like to thank um, Tamina for inviting me to the uh, stroke congress. So it's, it's my pleasure. So I have no disclosure uh, and there is no conflict of interest. So my objective today is about the principle of the stroke rehab care and the recommended standardized practice. And I'll get touch on the last evidence for specific therapies and treatment that eventually we'll have a bit of discussion about the technology-based intervention, including tailor rehabilitation, uh, mobile rehabilitation, and home-based rehabilitation. So as we know, the stroke is a cerebrovascular disease. It's the second most common cause of mortality worldwide, while it ranked the third among other causes of uh, disability. Um, in Saudi Arabia, with a population of more than 28 million, the stroke is one of the fastest growing cerebrovascular disease, leading to increased morbidity and mortality, thereby increasing social and economic burden in the kingdom. A recent study conducted by the Minister of Health reported the prevalence to be 29 over 100,000 population per year. So the most powerful predictor of rehabilitation outcomes is the initial stroke severity and the age. So we divided the stroke severity um, according to the PIM score to mild, moderate, and severe. PIM is the function independent measurement score. So if it is scored more than 80, the patient will be landed under the outpatient rehabilitation program. If the patient PIM score was um, be between 40 and 80, and the age is between 60, patient will be under the moderate uh, stroke severity, and that this kind of patient will require inpatient specialized rehabilitation. However, for patients who are above than 55, with a functional uh, independent measuring score of more than um, uh, less than 40, those patients will be lying under the severe category and this would require a specific kind of rehab, which including a caregiver support or inpatient specialized rehabilitation or what we call it alternative level of care. So in order to um, uh, measure the, uh, the outcome, there is different classification system. So one of them that we spoke earlier is the FEM, which is the functional independent measurement score. We also rely on motor function uh, score. We, we, by the other hand, they call it fugal mayor assessment uh, score, uh, ambulation and mobility, balance, speech and language, plasticity uh, through modified asteroid scales. Uh, we depend also on mental health, activity of daily living, the FEM, quality of life, SF36, stroke severity by modified ranking scale, and the link and eventually the mortality. So in order to go to each category, we have to know what is the modified static scales and the level of the evidence of research. So when we say about level one, we mean by that it's randomized clinical trial. And if we mean by level two, it's randomized clinical trial with a cohort as well as prospective controlled study. We we'll say level three, so it's only case control. And we we'll say level four, it's either case series and level five, it's just like observational or case report. So um, in terms of the rehabilitation um, pathway, so the patient will be initially receiving a rehabilitation in the acute care hospital or in the acute inpatient stroke then will be transferred or discharged to the acute inpatient stroke rehabilitation. And then ideally, it will be followed by home stroke rehabilitation, eventually outpatient stroke rehabilitation. So there's different stages. 
And according to the severity, some patient with might be only receiving rehab in the acute inpatient stroke than discharge. If it is mild, followed up by outpatient, some patients who are between mild and moderate, they will receive some subacute inpatient. And patients who are in severe, they might receive some home stroke rehabilitation or alternative level of care. So type of a stroke recovery, there is two types, it's either neurological or functional. So the neurological, which is the spontaneous, and there is a recovery of the neurological impairment itself. And the most spontaneous recovery occurs between the three to six months for stroke. Whereas the functional or the adaptive, which is the improving the mobility and the activity of daily living, influenced by neurological recovery, but not depending on it. And it may occur independent of neurological recovery though, and it depends on the motivation, ability to learn, family support, or the intensity and the quality of the therapy. So the neurological recovery is divided into early recovery and later recovery, whereas the early recovery is started by the erythema, which resolves into eight weeks. And there's a reperfusion of the ischemic penumbra, uh, and including a toxic factor elimination, what we call diastasis resolution. So um, later on, there is a thin S reorganization and the neuroplasticity. When we come to stroke rehabilitation, so I'm sure that we pass through a lot of definition of stroke rehabilitation, but it's effective stroke rehabilitation is characterized by an interdisciplinary team working cohesively and closely to provide a comprehensive program for each patient to reduce the mortality for better functional outcomes decrease the hospital length of stay and decrease admission as well as fewer dependent on others at seven months post-stroke and better quality of life. And that's including interdisciplinary team of uh, patient himself, the family, the caregiver, attendant, physician, nursing, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and speech language pathology, and not to forget about the psychologist, nutritionist, and eventually the social worker. So the principle of stroke rehabilitation or the standardized practice that includes stroke rehab unit, intensity of the therapy, early therapy, and task-specific training. As you see from the graph taken from the Maker Health Association, it's illustrated the importance of assessing the recovery rather than the outcome when studying brain plasticity after the stroke. Since um, depending on the individual lesion, a given outcome may correspond to different degree of plasticity. So as we see the three to six months go what we call the golden period when receiving the rehabilitation. So timing of a stroke of rehabilitation, I will call it a very early mobilization. So early mobilization may be beneficial for improving motor function and ambulation and mobility, but not the stroke severity or the length of stay or mortality. So the evidence is mixed concern, uh, concerning the activity of daily living. Here's a very trial or the uh, article about the efficacy and the safety of very early mobilization within 24 hours of the stroke onset. The purpose of this um, to determine if the rehab delivered intensively within the first few days. So if very early mobilization was better, there is a multi-center of 56 site randomized control trial, which took eight years to complete. They compared the patients um, into 1,054 versus the patient who received not a very early mobilization of 1,050. Then in phase two, Patients who went very early mobilized, they did unfortunately worse, more likely to die or have more severe stroke. So mobilization in the first few days after stroke, though, must be carefully done. Second thing is the intensity of the therapy. Uh, guidelines for adult stroke rehabilitation and recovery in 2016 state that a retrospective cohort study of 360 subjects demonstrated that who received more than three hours of therapy daily, they made significant more functional gain than who received less than three hours of activity daily. 
whereas the Canadian Stroke Guideline uh, stating that the stroke rehab patient should receive a minimum of three hours of direct task specific therapy five days a week. So in this, uh, in this article, uh, which shows the inpatient rehabilitation following the stroke, um, the, the purpose of this study to examine whether this standard was met on a single specialized stroke rehabilitation unit, and if the amount of therapy was an independent contributor to functional improvement. So uh, 123 stroke patients were admitted to a 30-bit stroke rehabilitation program over a six-month period. A workload measurement data were used to estimate the amount of the therapy that patients receive from core therapy during their inpatient stay. And they found out that um, the average of rehab patient gets a little or less than two hours of direct patient therapist time, five days, five days per week. The intensity of the therapy versus the early supported discharge. So this is an observational study. Um, that including 34 stroke patients. Patient had an activity monitor worn continuously for seven days, uh, final week in hospital and seven days at home. So patients at home the, who participate uh, spent more time upright and walking and they found it like they're sitting less. Um, the depression um, at discharge predicted greater sitting time and less upright time at home. Uh, with a p-value of uh, less than uh, 0 0.3. Um, and they were wondering whether an early discharge could be because of uh, concern of uh, uh, safety or is it like motivation? Is it cultural? So still there is an argue strongly in regard to um, intensity of the therapy versus the early supported discharge. In regard to the increasing the intensity, that should be included in group therapy, video games or board games, and generally have assistance apart from the, uh, the, the um, uh, major PT and the OT, and also weekend therapy is recommended. In regard to this task-specific training, so it's um, focused on learning or relearning a function and motor skills to optimize the function, direct toward patient's goal, and benefit to improve the drug strength, arm and hand activity and quality of life. So there is a um, research made in animals to show that functional reorganization is greater for tasks which are meaningful to the animal. So clinically, with the repetition of motor skills, it's play an important role, including and maintaining brain changes. So repetition in the absence of the skilled motor learning is not enough though for brain reorganization to occur. So approach to the post-stroke rehabilitation or what we call the motor recovery, it's either a compensatory or restorative approach. And this is what we need to know in terms of the compensatory approach. It doesn't reduce the impairment. It just uh, learn how to regain function or adaptive approach. And it's not sure if it is the first the neurological recovery. However, for the restorative approach, it maximizes the motor recovery, it maximizes the brain recovery, uh, and that's including traditional physiotherapy, sometimes neuromuscular facilitation, some uh, new developmental techniques like a bow bath, burn strom, stages, and task specific, and etc. And also including the motor lear relearning program. Um, for the uh, primers and the facilitators of motor recovery, those influencing the motor pathway, uh, we see that uh, the, the um, approaches that excite the uh, ipsilesional brain activity that include either task-specific activity or the constraint-induced movement therapy, CIMT, or the mirror therapy and uh, the, some pharmacological stimulant. However, some approaches for the contralegional brain activity may include the uh, direct um, cranial stimulation, magnetic stimulation, and CIMT as well. For the brainstorm approach, uh, there are seven stages from the flaccid to normal with developing of the spasticity in between, between stage two 
and stage five, and eventually to stage number six, where there is no spasticity or coordination, and eventually to a normal. So in uh, booba training, which one of the neurodevelopmental techniques for a restorative approach. So the therapist look at the patient posture of control. It, it looks at the movement pattern, if there's any abnormal tone, if there's any a muscle weakness, then try to correct it. Um, there is a lot of emphasis on how patients should not continue using the wrong movement pattern. However, the disadvantage is it's actually result in a slower progression in therapy. For the CIMT or what we call it the constraint induced movement therapy, it's more popular and it does focus on immobilization of the non paritic arm using a mitt and then a high intensity task oriented training with a paritic hand. 90% of the waking hours, six hours a day, five days, five days a week and two, uh, into a total of two weeks. It can be helpful for patients in the chronic stage of stroke more than one year. Uh, and patients must be able to extend their wrist uh, and actively move their digit of 20 degree wrist extension and 10 degree of finger extension in at least of two fingers. And there is an opportunity to increase intensity of therapy at minimal cost. So motor relearning program, it's a task oriented focus on relearning of uh, activity of daily living. So it's kind of cognitive training uh, on muscle movement with conscious elimination of unnecessary muscle activity. And that activity includes a real life activity with an emphasis on functional training of specific tasks, such as standing, walking, and carry over of those tasks. Some studies show that the motor relearning program has significant shorter length of stay than the traditional neurodevelopmental technique program and suggest maybe superior to conventional PT approach for achieving functional improvement. Uh, then the mirror therapy using the mirror so the paritic side is seen as a normal by the patient. Theory and how this work by reversing the learned paralysis of the brain. The Cochrane review uh, they state that moderate improved, uh, moderate improved movement of the affected upper and lower limb and the ability to carry out daily activity of people within and also beyond six months after the stroke. It also helped with the shoulder hand syndrome. Uh, what is the evidence for physical therapy for stroke? Uh, this is systematic review and meta-analysis um, done in 2014 and state that intensive high repetitive task oriented and task specific training is the best. Uh, neurodevelopmental technique as compared to non-NDT uh, is still equivalent. Um, I'll just talk in a brief about brain stimulation. I'm quite sure that it has been discussed in the first topic in the neuromodulation or neurorehabilitation. So that includes um, repetitive transcranial magnetic uh, stimulation and the transcranial direct current stimulation. So, um, it involves of a coil that produces a magnetic uh, field that passes through the cerebral cortex uh, and it gives low frequency stimulation and that inhibits the cortical excitability uh, while there is a high frequency stimulation uh, increase the cortical excitability. So there is a motor improvement can occur with uh, inhibition of the ineffective hemisphere which is inhibiting the affected side and exciting the affected hemisphere. Whereas the transcranial direct stimulation, uh, it's mild electrical current. It's conducted through two services, as you can see, uh, electrode applied to the scalp, and the uh, anodal uh, stimulation increases the cortical excitability, whereas the cathodal stimulation decreases the cortical excitability. The literature is still mixed regarding uh, the um, brain stimulation. Uh, fees or the functional effect stimulation, it's quite common in practice and it's um, uh, assist usually for the weak ankle dorsal flexion uh, or the common perineal nerve um, enhancing the ankle dorsal flexion during uh, the swing phase of the gait. Um, electromechanical or robotic assisted therapy also to assist 
or facilitate the classic range of motion and help maintain range of flexibility. So some medication for the motor recovery enhancer include, include fluoxetine. Fluoxetine um, has been uh, tried on rat and showed that it's a uh, kind of neuroprotective action on ischemic brain. Uh, levodopa as well as the methylphenidate. So this is a flame study uh, which was done in 2011. They have uh, given a floxetine for five to 10 days for a patient um, in the initial onset, uh, onset of the stroke within the, four, the three months. And they found that patient who received floxetine, they made better neurological recovery at 30 days. Uh, although the mechanism is uncertain, uh, there is a theory that it might uh, treat the depression and or facilitate the prolonged uh, reorganization of the brain. However, in 2019, another study called FOCUS uh, launched, uh, that published in Lance Neurology, they studied also the effect of loxetine in 3,127 acute ischemic patients. And they, again, they gave them they gave them fluoxetine of 20 milligram per day uh, versus placebo for six months, and uh, they have followed the motor recovery at six months. They found out there is no improvement of the disability at, at six months, and fluoxetine may lead to fracture bone and a new depression, and it has a lower incidence of depression, depression and patient. Uh, may have on top of that bone fracture. So the conclusion about other neurostimulant levodopa, so there is um, one uh, level one um, uh, tra um, evidence, there's a conflict between the use of uh, levodopa and placebo. Whereas other uh, central nervous um, stimulant like the methylphenidate, uh, level one, again, it may produce greater improvement in the motor function than the placebo. Other technology-based intervention, what we call the tele-rehabilitation. So the tele-rehabilitation is particularly useful for patients who cannot access the rehabilitation center, especially after the COVID crisis. So it's a process to provide the rehabilitation service remotely through information and communication technology. Um, this is a, a, an, um, a study that has been done in Saudi Arabia in regards to the uh, knowledge of uh, the physician of the tele rehabilitation, uh, how far they know about the tele rehabilitation. Um, this, including a survey of questionnaire that has been distributed, and there is a total of 46% of physicians, they are aware about the telerehabilitation service technology, but they haven't used it. Uh, around 70% of those uh, physicians, uh, they lack of knowledge about the IT and cost. However, 52% of physicians um, show that they, it's a breach of confidentiality. Eventually in 2020, uh, this is a rehabilitation hospital Telerehabilitation guidelines in King Fahdhad Medical City has been released uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic. And worldwide, as you can see, also the Canadian Stroke Best Practice has also released their Telestroke Virtual Healthcare Implementation Toolkit. Um, another um, technology that can help with receiving a rehabilitation therapy, what we call it the via therapy uh, toolkit, is to enhance the clinical decision making, especially specifically for the upper limb rehabilitation after the stroke uh, with a quality improvement initiative. So via therapy, uh, you load it into a smartphone um, and then um, that will be under the monitor of the occupational therapist. And there is the intervention uh, will be uh, for early phase rehab up to 12 weeks. Then after this, when the rehab may be provided in a less intense manner. Another thing that has been established as a remote MOCA testing, which is the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. 
um, that's including a telephone version where they have um, eliminated the visual element of the mocha and they instead of scoring like 30, the cutoff score went down to 22. Um, and they downloaded the blind version into a website and they administered it into, you can do it also over the phone. And that can be done also uh, through an audiovisual conferences. So eventually, so we live in the period of advanced promising technology that can improve rehabilitation of patients with a stroke in the early future. Robotic devices, brain computer interface, non invasive brain stimulant, and virtual reality and neuroprosthesis. Yet the shift of the rehab from hospital to home is inevitable, and we need a well evidenced model of care. Thank you so much for listening. And if there's any questions, I think I'll be the last one in this session. <laughs>